Hello, everyone. I'm Jie Yang from Crown AI Lab at Penn State University. I would like to present our work, Semantic Frame Forecast, today. We all agree that writing is complicated. Even famous writers like Amy Joy say anyone who says writing is easy isn't doing it right. When writers struggle to produce the follow-up scenes, what can we do to help? Lots of existing works try to provide hints, ideas, or text to help writers relieve this issue. However, most of these tools only provide text for the immediate future, such as the next sentence or the next few sentences. For example, Gmail now has a function to automatically complete the sentence given all the previous context you wrote. However, these tools might not be enough for fiction writers who write thousands of words for a single story. How can we help them though? We present a semantic frame representation on story block to capture a longer history and also generate hints for a longer future. For a book, we first formulate it as a sequence of story blocks where each story block contains a fixed number of sentences. We would like to know if given the current story block, is it possible to predict what will happen in the next story block, namely what semantic frame will occur in the next story block. In this example, each story block has a hundred sentences. We extract semantic frames from each story block and the overall goal is to predict semantic frames in a story block n plus 1 using all the information we have so far, such as story block n and story block n minus 1. So, what is semantic frame? What does it mean to predict it? Semantic frames are high level concept of things. That means when we try to predict a semantic frame in the next story block, we are predicting what will happen next in the story. In the writing process theory, it is very similar to the goal setting, where we try to figure out what we would like to do or what we would like to make it happen in the story. So how can we get the semantic frame representation? In this example, we have a story block with 20 sentences. We first use Open Sesame to extract all the semantic frames which are highlighted in the blue text. Note that semantic frame we use is FrameNet. FrameNet defines more than a thousand high-level conceptual units, which are usually called frames. Let's take a closer look at a semantic frame. The city here belongs to a frame, political locales. For this political locales, FrameNet defines a definition and a set of lexical units. The lexical unit means words that can trigger the frame. So we can see there is a city in the list. After getting all the semantic frames, we turn them into a TFID vector. So the value here means the importance of each frame. Let's go back to this figure again. What are we going to do in the semantic frame forecast task? We will use the existing information, which basically means story block n, to predict the frame representation in the next story block, which is story block n plus 1. Because the target that we want to predict is a vector, we select cosine similarity as the metric for evaluation. We built two different data sets from two different domains. First, we have book corpus, a collection of real fictions. Second, we also tried CODA19, a dataset of scholar abstract. 
We implement six different models for experiment. First, replay baseline. We assume that things happen right now will also happen later. So we directly take the input frame representation as the prediction. Second, prior baseline. We compute the prior by averaging all the frame representation in the training data and use that as the prediction. Third, LGBM with frame. We use the frame representation as the feature and fit it into an LGBM regression model to predict the frame representation in the follow-up story block. Fourth, event representation. We follow Martin et al.'s work in 2018. They extracted event tuples as an intermediate representation for stories. So we follow their setup by feeding the event tuple list into an LSTM model and make the prediction. Fifth, BERT, which is a straightforward one where we fit the text into BERT and predict the friend representation. The last one, GPT-2. We would like to see if the existing language generation model can generate text that also captures the semantic frames. So we use GPT-2 to generate a piece of text and parse it using Open Sesame to get the semantic representation and take that as the prediction. Here is the evaluation result. Note that numbers here are cosine similarities. From this table, we can see that first, BERT with text works relatively well when the block size is small. However, when the block size increases, such as larger than 150, LGBM with frame works better. Next, we also notice that event representation works better in short stories, which is similar to BERT baseline. And prior is actually a very robust and strong baseline throughout all the experiment. On the other hand, GPT-2 doesn't really work. We assume it is because that GPT-2 is not good at maintaining coherence among sentences or events. Would it be harder if we want to predict the farther future? Replay baseline tells us that the answer is yes because things happen right now will be likely to happen again shortly. However, they will be less likely to happen in the farther future. Does a longer history help? In this experiment, we try to use one, two, and five previous story blocks. It turns out that the answer is yes. LGBM can benefit from using more information from previous story blocks. However, BERT cannot take advantage of it, and the performance even got hurt. After we show the effectiveness of semantic frame forecast, how can we use that to help writers? We will try to integrate it into our previous work, Heteroglossia, a Google Doc add-on that can collect story plot ideas for writers. Writers will be able to retrieve semantic frame ideas from heteroglossia in the future. But what should we display? There are two things that we want to show. The first one is the semantic concept, and the other one will be their corresponding importance. But how can we combine these two information together? One of the possible ways is to display them as word cloud. In this example, each word represents a single semantic concept and their size and color shows their importance. To generate word clouds, we first take the top 30 friends ranked by their TF idea values. For each of the friends, we randomly select three lexical units to present the semantic concept. Last, we ran, when we try to render the word cloud, we compute the size and color 
according to their TFID value. When the TFID value goes up, the size should increase, and we should select a darker color for it. Using the work cloud visualization, we also conduct a human evaluation. We recruit workers from Amazon Mechanical Turk to do this task. We show a story block and two different work clouds predicted by two different models. Workers are asked to answer this question, which work cloud is more representative for the story. In the first set of experiment, ground truth gets the highest scores, which means that human can actually understand it and perceive the correct information. In the second set of experiment, we can see that LGBM performs better than BERT. Next, does the work cloud specific enough for human to understand? We recruit another set of workers to participate in this experiment. Here we show a work cloud and two different story blocks. One of the story block is the ground truth, and the goal of this task is to ask worker to select the one that is referred by the work cloud. And to this question, the answer is actually yes. 74% of the hits were answered correctly, which means that human can actually perceive the semantic concept using the work cloud. So thank you everyone to attend this talk. And we have already put all of our code and data set on the GitHub. So if you are interested, you can go there and find the code there. I also want to thank my advisor, Kenny Swan, for the support of this project. Thank you, everyone.